tape and it has the correct date on it so yeah it's better to just use auto dates than having to use this, those stupid buttons alright so this is the first official 8mm recording I'll be doing I think I'll be doing these for about a half hour every time I was thinking about doing it for an hour but then I decided an hour is way too long and I have to transfer this to the computer and there's no other way to do it except play it for another half hour into the computer so it saves as a file. So how long has it been since I've actually recorded anything in the 8mm format? And that is a good question to ask and you know what? It's been probably... Ooh, it's been over 10 years probably. Because I remember using an 8mm camcorder, yeah, before 2010. And I actually had to get, um, two, I bought two, two 8mm tapes for, I, I had them, but I threw them away, which was a stupid thing to do. I had two 8mm tapes I bought on eBay for 15 bucks. These are not cheap. Another thing to remind people is if they are using tape they're going to have to remember that it is actually going to be pretty damn expensive. If you go online and look on eBay right now, which is really the only place, or Amazon, or some kind of camcorder website, you'll notice that. Now, what camera am I recording on? Well, I am currently on a camera that I've never recorded on in my life, and I had to buy a X... An, what, what was it called? Um, how do I... What's the right word to phrase it? I had to buy a replacement battery for it. Also, I don't like something about this, is the fact that yeah, it doesn't e it doesn't even list doesn't even have um what's called a time of how long it's been recording for. I don't like that at all. Let's see if I can adjust the settings. It's always important to do that. Um, okay, we got a date, time, display. That's probably. What Don't I love these things? Okay, it won't show it. When I, when I show the front-facing camera, it will not show me how long it's recording. That sucks. Because that's what I rely on. I was going to rely on. But whatever. So, we've been recording for... Alright, we're just going to say, Siri, shut me down in 27 minutes. I'll say that. Hey Siri, set timer for 27 minutes. Okay, 27 minutes and counting. There was no Siri when this thing was around. Alright, well that's a flaw I already discovered in this thing. You cannot look at the time while in front facing camera. That's not really a big deal, but just discouraging. So, yeah, this is not a cheap hobby. And this I, and then this camera I used to use to convert old stuff on, it's a Sony... Jeez, oh, it doesn't even give me the model number on it. It should. It's, it's, it's some way. It's a Sony camcorder. And, um... It doesn't really matter which one you use. There is a VHS VHSC camcorder. Don't fool around with those. Those are horrible. The quality was about the same, in my opinion, when I used one of those back in the day. Problem with VH, VHSC was each tape you put in was like a, a half an hour or a little more. Then you ran out of tape, and that was it. So that wasn't very fun to use that. So I gave up. Um, yeah, I brought. I, I didn't really break that camcorder. I had a really bad battery for it. But what's nice about that was is you can get a tape, you get a VAC, VCR tape and a, a thing would flip up and you could put the tape right in it and watch it in your VCR. None of that conversion or anything like that. Or any, yeah, hopefully. So, um, let's get back to this. The first time I ever used a camcorder, probably within the family and all that, the worst thing they could have ever introduced me to because... I'm not a professional with this stuff, but I like to go and record everything I do. Well, not everything, but it might seem like that. And um, I like to do different things with it. Just record. I don't want to do any special effects. I don't want to make huge, giant movies or anything like that. I just want to make something basic. Very, very basic. People don't understand that. And um, I just want people to know. That's how I feel about it. And... Um, Let's see, maybe this tape, this thing, will tell us exactly what these tapes used to get from. I remember I used to get about a couple hours or more, but I don't think it says it on here. I threw away all the packaging for the tape. But, um, 
you got a video 8, video high 8, master copying and camera. That's not going to tell me what to do. Let's just, uh, alright, before using, leave cassette at room temperature for at least an hour. Yeah, I'd probably say that. Uh, all I have to say is, you know, I never had the, the overheating problem that I did now. Like, if I use a digital camera, it definitely will shut down at a certain point. And, um, but if I left this outside and it was recording or something, not this particular camera, it wouldn't fail. There's a lot of famous things on my channel right now, not famous, not even close to famous, but there's a few things on my channel right now that were filmed with an 8mm camcorder. And, um, whatever you call it. And, um, that's interesting. But it does have a checklist over here for LP and SP. IU, I don't even know what mode this is on right now that it's recording at. I prefer, it doesn't really matter because I'm doing a half hour a week and I'm just going to keep taping over it, but... SP. So I think we're on the highest recording mode possible for, for quality wise, but it's, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference because when I used to record things on an 8mm camera, um, whatever it's called, I might be calling it the wrong thing this whole time, <laughs> but when I used to record things it didn't make much of a difference for quality to me. To tell you the truth, I don't know how anyone could sit, it's not sit, but go around with one of these cameras and use them with such little amount of recording time of say an hour at high quality mode or whatever it might be. That was that must have been a disaster. I could picture a lot of people back in the day. That's why they they bought so many tapes, because they would go from one to the other. Um you know what I like about this camera is is um it it wasn't that much to get it going. I bought it a really long time ago to convert stuff, but then all of a sudden I was thinking, why don't I try this out? I'll try the tape. So um, I, I replaced the battery. There's an internal, what I really like about this camcorder, unlike a lot of the ones I've used, I've never seen it before, is the internal battery for the clock and all that for the system when it's not running to keep it going. Say if the battery were to go dead on the, um, the camcorder right now, it would keep it going for a little while. Um, it's a small, all of them are small circular batteries, and that battery is very accessible. It's right behind the LCD panel, and I, I found that really good. Sometimes you have to use special screwdrivers and stuff to get into things. Not with this one. This camcorder, you just take it apart, and that's it. I mean, not take it apart. You take a flap out, and that's it. You can get the battery out. You know, I haven't had many problems with eBay. Let's put it that way. I've had some this a couple this year because this year's been full of bad luck and all the problems that are going on in the world. But if you want to buy one of these, it's really not that difficult. You can go buy one very easily from eBay. Um the only problem is test if you really want to test it out, you're gonna have to do that very fast because you'll never get a refund if you don't. You can't decide two months later the camera doesn't work and you want a refund. A lot of people think they have the right to do that. No. Just um, test your technology before you buy it. That's what I recommend at least. Very important thing to remember. Um, let's see what else. What else is there for me to talk about? I want to make sure I know what time I'm at so I don't go over it. I set it for a time. I've got about 20 minutes. Maybe I'll stop before that. I don't know yet. Uh, what, why don't I try focusing more on the, some of the stories? What happened with 8mm cameras? Well, the first one I had was a Sony. Yeah, it was a Sony. And um, it really, I was, shit, I was shit out of luck basically right when I started using it. it had, the internal speaker blew out, which meant everything was recording fine with the microphone and stuff. But the internal speaker blew out, so I couldn't listen to it. And you, people are going to say, well, what's the big deal? Um, it's crap quality anyways. I needed something to listen to, though, sometimes when I went back to look at the film on the camera itself. And when that blew out, for many, many, many years, I had no internal speaker, so I'd have to connect it to a computer and stuff. And that was a pain in the ass. But one thing I have to say was really good is, like I said, the tapes weren't really that expensive back then. Well, maybe I didn't say that. They're pretty expensive now because they're extinct. But back in the day, these t these tapes were very easy to buy and they were cheap. They were just like buying a blank VCR tape 
VHS tape. You just put it into the, um, you just go down to the local drugstore or something, you can buy it for cheap. That's what you can do now with, um, that's what you could do not now, but then you could do with, um, 8mm tapes. And it was nice. Because I, I, I found it pretty convenient. You could just buy a tape real easy and it, it was that's as easy as it was. The bad thing to 8mm recording, I remember when I was a kid, was that every time you got, you picked out a camera, um, you picked out a new tape because one was full or something, you'd always have to go back and look and say to yourself, wow, look at all these tapes I have in front of me. Tons and tons of tapes. And, you know, there's just not, where do you store them all and put them? Now, you could say you could just put them in boxes. That's what I did, but I eventually just got rid of them all because, you know, there was too many of them. It's the, it, the downside, a downside to, to these tapes in particular, stuttering all over the place. A real big downside to these tapes in particular is that every time you wanted to look for footage, you have to rewind, you have to forward. It was really, really, it was not a fun experience. But, I'm not going to be doing that anymore. What I'm going to do is do straight things like this and I'm going to record myself. I'm not going to use this to record things out of the house or whatever. I mean, I could. And, the, the, and if you want to tape over something, that's the thing. That That's the one thing. Is There's no, like, you know, you push a button and it's, and it's deleted with this. Now you have digital files on a camcorder. And even on, I think, the DVD recorders, you just push a button and you would, um, that's one thing I didn't have was a DVD recorder or a mini DV, whatever the hell it was called. I never had one of those camcorders. You can't just delete things. You have to tape over them or you smash the tape. It's as simple as that. Um, and uh, that was, with these, if you want to delete something, you better delete it pretty fast. Um, you have to rewind and tape over the whole thing or do what you feel like. That's just how it is, you know. People would know that. What I did like about these cameras were that they had night vision. Now, this one, I believe, has night vision. Let me check. I've had this thing for years and years. I, don't, I never looked at any of this stuff until now. Um, I don't know if it has night vision or not. Jeez, picture effect. Um, yeah, why don't we um, just say that I thought this had night vision. Maybe it doesn't. But, nevertheless, I used to have night vision on them. The night vision was crap. Night vision was total crap. Okay, let's look at picture effect. If, that, if this is true, yeah, see, you can turn it into a crayon. See how easy it was back then? All the buttons are on the camera. Nowadays, everything's in the LCD screen, and if it blows out, you can't do anything. <laughs> crayon. Or, yeah. Okay. So, um... So, do I, I'm trying to think of how much this, these kind of camcorders cost back in the day. And I don't remember because you know, I was too young. I didn't purchase the cameras, but I can assume they were pretty high in price. Now you can get them for nothing. So if there are people out there that think it's impossible to record without spending a lot of money, that's not true. You can buy one of these and buy some tapes. And you can just keep taping over them. And you can't connect them to your, your computer, but if you can afford a computer, I think you can afford a slightly better camera. Another thing was the zoom lenses. Now, they're not particularly good. You lose a lot of quality when you start using digital zoom and all that. But um, what I noticed was is that a lot of these cameras tended to have, you could see things from further away than before. Now, if you look at those um, cameras of the SR10, sure, they may go just as far as a digital zoom zoom but not with optical and the optical on this thing is 18 it doesn't tell me about any digital zoom maybe there isn't no digital zoom whatever another thing that older camcorders really stood out on was the red light on the front that was a big thing that prevented me from recording certain people because they would know I was recording them there's a red light right on the front and um Basically, what I have to say about that, about it is, is that that's with this camera, it's easy to hide that light. You can just get a pe piece of um, 
electrical tape and you could just put it right on the front of it. Nobody would know the difference. But um, back in the day, if, uh, people would would know you were definitely recording them when they see that red light. That's something you don't you don't see that on iPhones, and you don't see that on um, on regular camcorders they sell now. It's a shame. I I look at what was before. Things were more mechanical. There were buttons all over the camcorder like crazy for everything. Where you didn't have to go through to the menu. Now it's forget it. Yes, there's buttons on the TD10 that I have and the SR10. But there's not as many buttons that are on here. Like for picture effect, I have to go through the menu completely with TD10 and SR just to get a picture effect. Which I think is ridiculous. I shouldn't have to do that. There should be a button just on the outside of the camera, like uh, um, just like what I'm doing right now, and that should be on all the other cameras. Now I could swear this thing had night vision. Let me look again. Uh, this I could swear there was night vision on this thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Here it is, night shot. Yep. They don't even call it night vision on this one. It's called night shot. But I see, even see the night shot. There's a button for it. We're going to turn the lights off. We're going to see how good the night shot is. Okay. It's not perfectly pitch black, but good enough. Alright. Here we are. The night shot. Well, obviously it's not very good at focusing what's going on. Probably because of that poster in the background. Um, jeez. Maybe if I get closer to it, it'll focus. Yeah. All right. So it's pretty good, isn't it? Night vision is pretty cool. Maybe I should do more night vision. <laughs> or do every other one. And um, look at how easy that was, and how much quick, more quick it was. Um, sadly, most cameras don't even have night vision anymore because it's more of a gimmick. As if I was to move away another 20 feet, the night vision wouldn't even kick in because the night vision is very limited. But this is very good. I mean, come on now. If it would be nice, you're never going to see this on an iPhone or anything else. Because night vision, look, there's no color anymore. I'm green. The whole picture is green. That's another problem that I have with it. Everything was green. It changes the color. I hated that. One thing that I hated about it. And um, some of these um, 8mm camcorders had built-in lights on the top. So you could see in front of you. Those were better. Except those drain the power a lot, and you need an extended battery if you want it to last a long time. All I have to say about that is, is that um, that's um, that's how it was. You know, I am very, I am very, very, very satisfied with the with this right now with the night vision. I think it's pretty cool. I, but I don't think you, you'll never see this in a camcorder again. Um, a lot of the camcorders you have now, there's only, they don't have a lot of them in the store. They do have quite, they still have a ton of them. They're all, you're always going to see them online if you go to like a Sony website or something, but in the store you don't have many options. I don't think I've seen any with night vision. This is called Night Shot. So it's pretty cool. It works pretty good. I'm about, what, I'm only about, what, four or five feet away from it. But if you keep See, there's no way for me to really test it in, in here. Maybe next time, I'll test it out in a more better environment where I can go further away from something. Thing is, there's all light, all kind of lights everywhere, outside and stuff. So, yeah. I'm trying to think. If I turn to the left here, well, you can see everything. I don't think you can see, you can't see my little Terminator thing. I mean, uh, no, actually, no, it's really good. You can see the couch. Yeah, it's not as bad as I thought. It's a, but you got to remember, it has to have a lot of light to reflect off of. You can't just, um, yeah, like I said, you can't just turn night vision on and pitch black and expect it to go very far. I've used, I've tried that before when I was younger, and it doesn't go very far. You have to have some light to reflect. There isn't that much light down here, but I'm sure if we made it completely pitch black, I'm sure it would make somewhat of a difference. 
that's my overall opinion. I mean, I'm not a professional, and I don't know that much about cameras, but I do know a little from what I've described. And um, go back in the day, this is something. Um, this is a. We used to use these things when there was no iPhones. There were cell phones, uh, but they were just flip phones, basically. And that was it. This is what we used: cameras, regular cameras like this that took picture. Obviously, because it was a cam camcorder, and that was it. But I like to say there's a lot of features I like on these older camcorders that you never had on a new one. And it's, it's just so sad that, like, we couldn't have some kind of night vision just for to, uh, to appease someone. Couldn't we have some kind of cheap night vision on a camcorder? But how much could it cost to add something like this on it? Even though it sucks, you can't see my face, but it is a very interesting feature to see everything else. Yeah, it's probably better that I get a, more of a distance from the camera next time, as you can see on that side over there. That, um, yeah, that's basically it. So, um, the time is coming down. Got about another 8 minutes and 25 seconds. All I have to say is, is that there's a lot of, um, there's so much to, to talk about uh, with cameras and stuff. And let's just say I've been using a camcorder for, I keep saying that, for a long time. Camcorders. I don't use them much anymore, though. I'm more making videos with my iPhone and stuff because it's so much easier. But just to do this once in a while would be fun for me. Um, I was finally able to get a couple of tapes, and I decided it was worth doing something. How many people um, actually still have their camcorders like this is beyond me. Most people probably threw them away or sold them on eBay. You know what's funny is that people say there's no market for this anymore. Well, if there's no market for it, then why are there tons of them being sold on different websites? There is a market, but usually it's for those people that want to do this as a real extreme hobby. If I had somebody, that would be one thing to do that for. You know, this could be called the Night Shot Camera. The TD-10 does have Night Shot capability. Let's all remember, the TD-10 is not meant for it. The night vision is ten times worse than this. Isn't that sad? An old 8mm camcorder you know, has less of a has less of a night vision capability than an expensive camcorder that has on um, what? How many? 40 gigs on it? With a hard drive? And a touch screen? And all that? Something this camera doesn't have? That's pretty bad. I, I think if they were... I don't think they should have put any night vision on that camera. I think they should have just made one like... They should have just left it the way it was. They could have made one like this. Yeah, it sounds like it's ringing. Hope not. Um, that's how I feel about it. This is um, this is fun though, to go back, go back into the days of cameras and stuff and record with the tape. I did that for a long time. Most most kids these days would never know what that was like because they have an iPhone. And to tell you the truth, the iPhone only gets you so far. It doesn't zoom in like, even this camera, you could say, zooms in better than the iPhone can. Not that it's going to have accuracy or anything, but I think it's something to worth to mention. I, I compare, the, these cameras have a place in history, put it that way. The problem is, is that a lot of people don't want to work with mechanical stuff because it, it'll break. And it's true. After a while, using something like this, it will break. Even if you treat it good, it will break. I, I destroyed this. Every, I have to say I had how many 8mm camcorders? I only had one. But boy, did I beat that thing to hell. I dropped it a million times. Um, oh, man, it was destroyed. But you know what? The, the, um, the viewfinder, the LCD screen, never broke. Ever did it break. On newer camcorders, they break very easily and very fast, no matter what you do to it. Whether you're violent with it, whether you open it very slowly, nothing happens. I, ne yeah, can't, I never had a camera like this where the screen broke. Oh, another problem I used to have, which this was a very important thing to bring up, was the fact that if you were using an 8mm camcorder, 
Um, if you tried to play back a tape, sometimes it wouldn't show anything. You'd push play, and all you'd see was that blue screen, and nothing would happen. And then you'd go back and forth. And as you were, if you were to rewind, I'm not talking about stop and rewind. I'm talking about when you're already playing, and then you rewind, you could see the picture. Or forward, you could see the picture. And I, and I, just, I just have to keep putting the, putting the tape in and out of the camcorder a million times. It finally worked. But it was a big pain in the ass to do that because um, I didn't like doing that. I just liked putting the tape in and having it play. But it didn't always do that. So um, I'm trying to think of what else. Jeez. With tapes. That was the tapes. Um, put, putting them in and out and then, and then waiting for them to play. I actually ripped apart one of my tapes once. I got so aggravated with it. And come to find it out, I shouldn't have done that. Because... Um, the tape was still good. It's just the camcorder was busted. That's what. Maybe that's just a, a problem that happens when you've used the camcorder for too long. It develops a problem. Maybe one of the heads inside or whatever got dirty or. But whatever. This used to be also, when people used these things, there used to be a huge business where you'd go back and you'd, um. You'd, uh, what's it called? Wow. Shit. You'd, um. You'd be able to repair them. You can get repairs done to camcorders, televisions. That's out the window too. Back in the day that was um the thing to do. You would go you go you'd go out and get your thing repaired. Because people, and you know what? Now that I think about it, it all depends depended what kind of camera you had, but if you had a cheap one it wasn't even worth going to get it fixed. You're probably better off getting a brand new camera, but that's just my my theory on things. This was this was an interesting thing to do. I'm running out of time. I've got about two minutes and thirty seconds. I just say that if somebody has a camera and they want to use it, they have many, many, many opportunities to do it. You do. I'm telling you right now, you have many, many, many opportunities. The, the prices are endless. I mean, you can have ones that are expensive for ones that are cheap. I don't remember how much I paid for this camcorder. Um, I ha I was already pretty much in the digital, full digital age by then. But um, I have to say that it was probably 50 to 100 bucks. And you're saying that's expensive for something that's totally out of date. Even 10, about 10 years ago, actually it was less than that. No, it's not. And plus, I had no choice. I had 8 millimeter tapes that I had to convert over from childhood. How was I going to do that? There's no other way to do it except to buy one of these camcorders, unless you have some kind of expensive setup. Panis. I used to have, um, yeah, it was another Panis. There was another camcorder I used to be able to use just to view things. The, um, the recording function wouldn't work. I think I just threw it away, though. It was a Panasonic, and all it had was a viewfinder. It didn't have the screen. This has a viewfinder and the screen. Nowadays, you can get cam recorders that are just viewfinders, but guess what? You also um, can't get the... Um, the l let me repeat that, repeat that over again. You can get cameras with view viewfinders and the LCD screen, but it's very rare. A lot of the ones like at entry level are just with LCD screens, I mean, that kind of sucks, because if you're in a situation where it's really sunny out, you can't see the screen, and how are you supposed to record anything? That's why a viewfinder is very important, especially while in the sun. Now, I don't, I don't care if people believe me or not, or agree with me. I, that's, that's up to them to interpret that. But i got to tell you that um, that's how I feel about it. Well, we'll, so we'll see how everything goes. We'll see how truly how everything goes, and we'll go from there. But I just like to say it's been an honor to work with the, these kind of um, cameras, and I still don't regret it. Only thing I um, regret is the convenience. It's not very convenient. You have to keep using tapes and converting things, but it's fun to use tapes once in a while. It brings you back to the good old old age. All right, well that's it, and bye bye.